Hi and welcome to a large project which I've just finished which plays uh, Mozart's musical dice waltz program uh, Musikalisch Würfelspiel uh, which he wrote in 1787. Uh, the basis of the program is that there is a lookup table which you can see here um, which contains um, a column for each of the bars in the minuet. Eight bars in the first half, eight bars in the second. And the column, the, the rows, are numbered from two up to twelve, which are the totals you get when you throw two dice. Uh, anything as if you get two ones from two up to two sixes, which is twelve. You throw a pair of dice, total the dice, and let's say you get a seven. This means that you pay bar number 104 in the first position. You then throw the two dice again. Let's say you get a four as the total. You pay bar 95 in the second position and so on choosing eight numbers from the first part of the table. You then repeat the process for the second half of the minuet uh, producing a further eight numbers. The minuet at each section is played twice through uh, this section and then the other. So how does Sonic Pi go around doing this? Well um, I'm not going to go into the basis of the program other than to say that uh, in order to prove that it is actually working, we're going to get the program to run three times through. We have a series of arrays, Rn for right-hand notes, Ln for left-hand notes, Rd for the corresponding durations, and Ld for the corresponding durations of the left-hand part. These variables hold the duration of a note from semiquavers through quavers, crotchets, dotted crotchets, and there are various patterns which can occur in the bars of the minuet six semiquavers in a bar, four semiquavers and a quaver, a quaver and four semiquavers and so on. Nine possibilities. We then have a procedure which actually plays through all the notes in one bar given the number of that bar. I'm not going to go into details as I say, time is short in the video, um, but um, we also have two further um, little helper uh, functions for generating trills the notes in a trill and the um, durations of each of those notes. Here is the lookup table, uh, in this case held as a two-dimensional array, the one that we saw in the photo just a short while ago. And then the next section here simulates the throwing of the dice. We're throwing uh, the dice, two dice, and generating two round row numbers. I've used the range 0 to 5 twice over and added them together rather than one to six because the lookup table numbers from the elements from zero, not from one. Uh, then we simply have a procedure waltz, which is going to throw the dice eight times twice over, add the numbers together, and concatenate them into a list W, which is returned, and that will give us the bar numbers that we need. The next section, which is fairly massive, contains the entry of all the notes uh, which make up these various bars. You'll notice that in some cases, this in this case, the right hand uh, for bar number 22, 57, 96 and 112 is the same. They're all an E5, a C5 and a G4. So we don't have to write them out uh, twice over. We can simplify things a bit. Even though the program is quite long and it's actually too long to run on a Mac. You need a Pi 2 in order to run it. Having generated all of these notes, we can now come to play them. Uh, we have a loop which is going to go around number of tunes, that's three we specified it, round this loop and each time it goes round it's going to play one waltz. We first of all work out from the function waltz what the numbers are and we're going to print that on the screen. I'm also going to make something called perform plus which is the number of tunes and then the numbers of these uh, notes. And here's the bizarre bit, we're going to write all of this information out to a file and also we're going to require a queue go in order to start the program. More of that anon. We then get on to playing it. We uh, play each half twice, so a two times loop, and embedded in that an eight times loop, which is going to go through the eight bars which are needed for that part and play them. K, the second time round, is going to have a value one, and that's going to cause it to choose the second time bar of the first uh, part rather than the first time bar. The second half goes round twice, 
eight times through the second half of the table from eight up to 15 and in this time there's no second time bar so it's exactly the same both times through. We then sleep for three uh, crotchets and go back again to get the next tune. At the end there's another bit of funny file handling stuff which is going to produce a file called kill but more of that anon. The a twist in the tale for this um, Sonic Pi program is that it's also going to generate a picture of what you're playing and it does so because I've also got scans of 176 cards in here and these uh, hold each one a picture of the music for that particular bar. And as well as the um, Sonic Pi program here, there is another Ruby function, uh, Ruby uh, uh, script called Waltz Control. And just for convenience, I plonked this into the third buffer here. You can't play it from here, but just to show it. And you can see that this is to do with file handling. It's going to get the information from the performed text file here, and it's going to actually create a web page. Here's all the HTML stuff down here. It's a web page called Waltz HTML, and it's going to put into that in a table of two rows, eight pictures for the, um, uh, sorry, 16 pictures for the first um, part, and uh, sorry, eight pictures of the first part, and then underneath it, eight pictures for the second part. And it's going to start off the Epiphany browser and display that information, Waltz HTML, in it. Uh, once it's done that, it's actually going to um, list a file called go.txt, which contains the word senq colon to Sonic Pi command line interpreter. And that's where you get the cue to play the tune. After being, being round everything um, three times, um, it's going to sit and wait for uh, the existence of a file called um, temp kill here. It says while not that while that file doesn't exist, just sit and twiddle your thumbs and wait. Once it does exist, wait for a pause to make sure Sonic Pi is finished playing. Kill the browser, kill the temporary files we've created, and that's the end of the program. So let's see it running. We'll switch back to here, buffer two. I'm going to go to my um, Ruby Waltz Control file. Start that running. Just sitting there waiting and it's waiting for Sonic Pi to start playing and to generate the numbers which will show up on the screen in a minute. There they are. And then it goes off to generate the pictures and it's going to start playing. Here it goes. First line. Repeat, second time through going to choose the top line here for the second time round of the left hand. Different sound. Notice the trill function. Second time through, exactly the same. Trill again. It's now finished that. It's going to generate the second tune which is now going to display waltz two of three, you can see up there, and it's going to start playing that. A different waltz. Repeat. Second time bar. Repeat, first, second half now. This time we'll watch Sonic Pi on the changeover. Still playing through the second waltz. It's now going to generate the third one, which will appear down the bottom, and then immediately waits for the sync cue, and it starts writing the file out, so that generates the picture here, and then starts it playing. Repeat. The end this time, Sonic Pi is going to create the kill text file, and the second script will see that and then switch off the 
uh, Epiphany Browser, and that will be the end. So it kills the browser, and we can see completed down the bottom here for Sonic Pi, and that's also the completion of the video. Hope you've enjoyed it.